Astronomers developed the concept of apparent magnitude in order to categorize the brightness of celestial objects as observed from Earth. It ranges from the most unimaginably dazzling objects to the most dim of all. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to do a rundown of the shiny objects in our skies. So, let's get to it. A word of warning before we begin. This video contains numbers and lots of them. You might want to rerun the video or even use the pause button during watching as some of the information will come quick and fast and may be difficult to take in all at once. In each part of this video, I'd advise you to take a check at the bottom right hand side vantage point so you know which object we're actually looking from. Obviously the closer you are to an object, the brighter it is and vice versa, irrespective of the object's intrinsic brightness. In other words, the sun is going to look brighter from Mercury than it is, say, from Alpha Centauri. So, let's get down to business. JD's GSZ-130 is a high redshift Lehman Brake galaxy discovered by the JSWT on the 29th of September 2022. A later paper in April 23 suggests that JD's isn't in fact a galaxy, but a dark star with a mass of around a million times that of the Sun. Due to the expansion of the universe, its present proper distance is about 33.6 billion light years, but the light is around 13.6 billion years old. This object begins our list, and viewed from Earth it reaches apparent magnitude of 29.4. Kuiper Belt Object 2003 BH1 is some 2.5 times brighter than JD's, and this 15km Kuiper Belt object seen by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2003 is currently the dimmest known directly observed asteroid. As you can see in the photo, it barely registers at all, at apparent magnitude 28.4. We can see the Lumen 16 brown dwarfs as the yellow disk at the centre of this interesting image. These individual brown dwarfs are not resolved as a pairing, but as a combined object as they're seen from such a large distance. At a distance of approximately 6.5 light years from the Sun, they are the closest known brown dwarfs and have an apparent magnitude of plus 22, which makes them 174 times brighter to our eyes on Earth than 2003 BH1. Dwarf planets Pluto and Charon, at their maximum brightness, are 725 times fainter than anything the naked eye could see. Pluto itself, as we see here, is substantially brighter than Charon though, almost six times brighter in fact, and we must bear in mind that for each step up in one by magnitude, the object is 2.5 times brighter. So here it makes sense that Pluto, 1.9 apparent magnitudes brighter, is almost six times brighter in conclusion. For reference, Pluto itself remains 4,786 times brighter than the Lumen Brown Dwarf pairing. Next up, we have Proxima Centauri, our nearest neighbour at some 4.24 light years distance, shines in our skies at plus 11.05, which is almost seven times brighter than Pluto, but unfortunately it's still exceptionally dim, as we can see in this very very high resolution picture. Proxima is so dim, in fact, it would have to be 66 times brighter to be seen with the naked eye. Planet Neptune, the eighth and final planet, is still too dim to be seen with the naked eye and it's plus 7.67 maximum apparent magnitude. The beautiful blue world has gone by its business throughout almost the entire existence of the oblivious human race. At perihelion, or at its closest and brightest approach to the Sun, Neptune is some 34 times brighter than Proxima Centauri, but for reference at this point, I'm prepared to be shocked, because if both objects are viewed from the Earth, Neptune would shine some 58 trillion times dimmer than our Sun, the Clark event, also known as Gamma Ray Burst 080319b, was a spectacular astronomical phenomenon that occurred on March the 9th of 2008. This event involved the sudden release of an immense amount of energy in the form of gamma ray radiation, the most intrinsically bright object indeed ever observed by humans in the universe. At its peak, it reached an apparent magnitude of plus 5.8 when observed from Earth. Make sure to watch to the end of the video though, because we'll come back to the Clark event later. The star of Delta Centauri, at an apparent magnitude of plus 2.6, is the hundredth brightest star in the night sky. A star in the constellation of Centaurus is located about 410 light years from the Earth, and is a hot B-class main sequence star with an intrinsic luminosity of about 5,100 suns. To our eyes from planet Earth, Delta Centauri shines over 100 times brighter than the planet Neptune. Adara, or Epsilon Canis Majoris, is a special star because once upon a time, well actually some 4.7 million years ago, 
It was the brightest star in the night sky and had an incredible apparent magnitude of minus 3.99. This is because Adara is a blue main sequence star that burns bright. These days, however, it's moved on and its current location is much further away, at 430 light years distance from the Sun, which gives it now an apparent magnitude of 1.5. Still a very bright star, of course, and the 22nd brightest in the night sky, in fact, and nearly three times brighter than Delta Centauri. If we were able to turn the camera around on our own sun and view ourselves from the perspective of what someone in the Alpha Centauri system might see, our bright yellow star would hold its own in the sky and shine its sun plus 0.46 apparent magnitudes. A very, very bright star indeed, and roughly 2.6 times brighter than Adara would also shine in the Alpha Centauri skies. Indeed, we would become a part of the famous Cassiopeia constellation, adding another star on the far left of the famous W asterism. Next, we see Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet is the only naked eye comet that can appear twice in a human lifetime. On the left here, we see photographs in 2003, when it was 28 astronomical units, or 4.2 billion kilometers, away from us and heading out to Aphelion from the Sun, and it had an apparent magnitude of plus 28.2, which makes it marginally brighter than the distant Kuiper Belt object that we talked about originally, of 2003 BH1. On the right, however, we see Halley's Comet as it's predicted to appear in 2061, when it next passes by Earth, and very bright, roughly the same as the star of Vega today. In the realm of interstellar neighbours, the binary Alpha Centauri pairing, although bright in Earth's skies, they were viewed from the even closer Proxima Centauri, at just 0.2 light years distance. They would shine with an apparent magnitude of minus 6.8, hugely bright now, they would be 11 and a half times brighter than the planet Venus is for Earth. So a real celestial marvel. Proxima Centauri's planets are indeed a tantalizing destination for future exploration. Many of our viewers will be aware that at some point in the not too distant future, celestially speaking at least, the star of Betelgeuse has the potential for a supernova explosion. When it does finally go supernova, it will become a celestial beacon visible from Earth with an apparent magnitude of minus 12.4 heralding a stellar spectacle of cosmic proportions. For reference, a Betelgeuse supernova would be roughly 2,013 times now brighter than Venus. To help you put that into perspective a little better, our moon shines at minus 12.9 when it's in its full stage. Viewed from Earth, this radiant spectacle, I'm sure you'll agree, despite its familiarity in our skies, does continue to mesmerize all who gaze upon it. One and a half times brighter than the Betelgeuse supernova, the Moon is an astonishing 3,191 times brighter than the next brightest object in our skies, Venus. As we move out in the solar system, of course our Sun diminishes in brightness. From the planet Uranus, the mystical seventh planet, and its Shakespearean moons, we would see the Sun shine at around minus 20.2. This would of course still light the Uranian system brightly enough during the day, although the Sun would remain 413 times dimmer than from our own planet Earth. Of course, our Sun seen from a distance of one astronomical unit away, where our Earth does indeed sit, or some 150 million kilometers. The Sun registers an apparent magnitude minus 26.74. We all know, of course, what this looks like, and at this point it's worth mentioning that the apparent magnitude of the Sun, while useful when comparing the brightness of celestial objects, is not suitable for comparing the absolute brightness of stars, or indeed other celestial bodies. For that purpose, astronomers use absolute magnitude, which measures it in an object's intrinsic brightness, and that, of course, is a whole different story. A star of relative fame in our local area, Altair, or Alpha Aquilae, the Eagle Star, is an A-class main sequence star. If it were to replace the Sun, it would shine at a apparent magnitude of minus 29.39, and would be about 11.5 times brighter than our Sun. It's just as well it isn't though, because Earth would quickly become toast, as we see here in happening, the Canadian city of Toronto. As we venture further into the heavens, we do encounter Rigel, a blue supergiant star in the bottom right corner of Orion, continuing the theme of replacing the Sun. Beta Orionis is a truly immense star, and would dazzle us here on Earth with an apparent magnitude of minus 38, when observed from the one astronomical units away. This star's brilliance is such that it would appear as a large, dazzling blue disk much larger than our own sun, and our Earth would quickly resemble a hell world, and all life would be extinguished in a couple of blinks of the eye. The stellar marvel, of course, of R163A1 is one of the most massive stars known. 
even more luminous and powerful than Rigel. If it were to replace the Sun, it would boast an apparent magnitude of minus 39.66 when observed from one astronomical unit away. This is now 147,000 times brighter than the Sun, so I'll give up using the toast analogy because frankly, it's likely much of the Earth would just be vaporised. Located in the tarantula nebula of the Large Magellanic Cloud, however, this stellar giant defies comprehensive with its incredible luminosity, but it shines with a modest 12.2 apparent magnitude when viewed from its real location. We must bear in mind, however, that it's at least 163,000 light years away. In our final reference today, we return to the Clark event or gamma ray burst GRB 080319b, the brightest thing ever seen in all recorded history. If we were to see it from a distance of one astronomical unit, or from the Earth's sun distance, it would register an apparent magnitude of minus 67.57. Well, that's just a number I hear you say, but let's put this in perspective. If we were to observe this gamma ray burst from the distance sun to Earth, it would be over 20 quadrillion times as bright as the sun. Yes, that's right, 20 quadrillion times brighter to our eyes than the sun. Let that sink in. The apparent magnitude scale ranges from the tiniest specks of dust to the brightest, most luminous quasars ever known. From objects in our solar system to gamma ray bursts that have traveled for millions, if not billions of years to reach us. Let's make the most of this fantastic way of measuring the beautiful tapestry we see in our night skies. And let's marvel at the mind blowing extremes that it can create. Thanks for watching. There may not be a video next week as this one ran over schedule, and as you're aware, having watched the end, it's longer than our usual 7 to 8 minutes videos. If not, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with a shiny new edition. Don't forget to like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks so much to those of you who have already done so. And if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and your families well, and I'll see you on the next one.